apparent movement of the sun. There are two apparent movements of the sun. The first one is caused by the rotation and the other is caused by the revolution. Let's learn them in detail. Every day, the sun rises in the east, rides across the sky and sets in the west. This movement of the sun from west to east is apparent. In relation to the earth, the sun is constant, it doesn't move. The sun appears to move from west to east because of the movement of the earth, its rotation on its own axis. This causes day and night. As you can observe, the sun rays don't fall uniformly all over the earth. The equatorial region gets the maximum radiation from the sun. That is the regions in and around the equator get maximum heat and light. In general, the regions between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn receive vertical sun rays. If you move towards the poles, you get slanting rays. This uneven distribution of solar radiation creates different air pressure areas and different temperature zones. We will discuss this a little later. The other apparent movement of the sun is caused by the revolution of the earth around the sun. The earth has an axial tilt of 23.4 degrees to its elliptical orbit. This tilt and the revolution results in an interesting phenomenon. Not all the regions of the earth receive direct sun rays all through the year. The sun appears to move between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This causes seasons. The seasons thus are caused by the axial tilt of the earth and the revolution of the earth around the sun. The earth takes 365.24 days to complete one revolution. Due to the earth's tilt, different parts of the earth are exposed to the direct sun rays during different times. Starting from about March until June, the northern hemisphere faces the sun. It receives direct sun rays. So it is summer in the northern hemisphere. During these months, the southern hemisphere is away from the sun and receives slanting rays. So, it is winter in the southern hemisphere. Starting from about November until February, the southern hemisphere faces the sun. It receives direct sun rays and experiences summer. It's winter in the northern hemisphere in these months. The sun's apparent movement is restricted between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. What is its implication on India? Observe the seasons changing as the sun moves between the tropics. The sun rays don't fall vertically all over the earth. The equatorial region receives maximum radiation. Due to high temperature, the air becomes hot. This hot air rises up in the atmosphere. A low pressure belt is created in this region. It is called the equatorial low pressure belt. It is present between 5 degree north latitude and 5 degree south latitude. In the atmosphere. The temperature decreases with the increase in the altitude. The hot air that rises up from the equatorial low pressure belt becomes cool and heavy. Then it sinks down between 30 to 35 degrees latitudes on both the hemispheres. This creates high pressure areas. These are called subtropical high pressure belts.
the Earth spins on its own axis at a great speed. This results in an interesting phenomenon. The wind from around 60 to 65 degrees latitudes on both the hemispheres is blown towards the equator. Low pressure areas are created in these regions. They are called the subpolar low pressure belts. The polar regions never received direct sun rays. These regions are extremely cold and the wind is heavy. Naturally, high pressure areas exist in the polar regions. They are called polar high pressure belts. Wind always moves from high pressure area to low pressure area. This means the equatorial low pressure belt attracts wind from the subtropical high pressure belts. The subpolar low pressure belts attract wind from the subtropical high pressure belt and the polar high pressure belts.